Welcome, my name is Lars von Tienen and today I want to give you an overview about our cycle analyzer toolset from the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. Yeah, so what, what does it mean? So you know we have the cycle analyzer as a tool set which is available for every member uh, for the Foundation. And the cycle analyzer offers you the possibility to analyze different data, set, data sets for cycles. But what does this mean? That's, that's the purpose of this video. Um, before we jump into the direct tool, I want to go over some basic understanding of what, what we expect the data set looks like, what you would um, upload to the cycle scanner. So therefore, let me open a screen for you to go through it. Um, and just need to enable that. So um, first of all, let's get some basic on a kind of cycle phasing. So what you see here, please ob observe the, the black line. That's kind of the simulating the data set, which we will use then in the cycle. Like right now it's a flat line. So what you see here down below are two cycles, which I've, which I've prepared. And for each cycle, it's important that you have a basic understanding that the first important information is the wavelength or the length of a cycle. Can switch the length and you see if, if you use a smaller length it will look like this and if you extend the length the cycle will look like this. So the first information you need to care of is the length of the cycle. The second one is the amplitude of a cycle. So you can change the amplitude and you will see how the amplitude impacts the cycle. And the third important information is the so-called phase of the cycle and the phase tells you a little bit the starting point of a cycle low or top of this data. So you see I will now change the Pace here on that. So this is a smaller, smaller cycle with a wavelength of 44 here, and down below there is a longer term cycle, but then the same parameters here, just keep in mind the length information, the amplitude information, and the phase information here. So what we will now do is if we add these two cycles on our data set, so let's add the first one, so as you see now the data set consists now of the first cycle. If we activate now the second cycle, because each data set is not a clean cycle, it's a combination of different cycles, this is what the black line the data set will look like if, if we add these two, two cycles on one data set. So you now observe that this um, consolidated cyclic information looks different than the two cycles alone. So and if you switch now the faces, you will see that how the overall data set will change its, its overall look like. So I'm just changing the phase of the smaller cycle, or I can even change the wavelength of the, of the shorter cycle. So that's important, and that's, that's the basic understanding how composite data sets look like if you add individual cycles to this data set. So, but that's even not all. So um, a real data set consists of more. So for example, you often have kind of noise in the market, or noise is a kind of definition for something which is not, yeah, from a mathematical point of view, defined upfront. So I will add now some noise. And this is, you will see now that you do not see these clean cycles anymore. So they are distorted by some noise information here on the black overline. So keep in mind, we have just added these two cycles and some random noise. In addition to that, you often have trend information in the market. So the market is not like flat and then cycling. You also have like uptrends or downtrending data sets for whatever reason. So first let's let's turn off all other information. So a trend looks like this. Yeah, We have an uptrend, downtrend, uptrend, and then a larger downtrend. This is the pure trend information. So if we know how to go back at the noise, cycle one, cycle two, and now at the trend on top of this, which I will now enable, this is then how the final data set looks like. So you see now that the cycle and random noise is, is put on top of the trend information here. And now this is the black line, just from a theoretical point of view, how the black line, how a data set consists of. So we assume that if you analyze data with the cycle analyzer, that you have trend information in this data set, that you have kind of noise information in this data set, and then you have one, two, three or more cycles uh, which are in this data set, which finally result to a data set like shown here, so the black line. If you go into the cycle analyzer, you just purely have the black line. And what the cycle analyzer now tries to do is, tries to get analyzing only the black line and try to get a kind of sense, okay, what cycles are in this data set? 
So in this case, we have bitted our data set on our own just to, just to explain how it works. The cycle analyzer is now re re-engineering the, the black uh, data set and tries to tweak out the important cyclic information out of it. So that's the basic, uh, how a data set is kind of uploaded or, or, or the black line is kind of an EDL data set, which we will try to use, uh, but you can use any data set. This is just for demonstration purposes, how, how kind of um, data looks like based, based on cyclic information. What we will now do, we will use this kind of data set and pull this into our cycle analyzer. And let's see how, how this works. So to do this, I have prepared for sure a kind of um, yeah, Excel sheet just, just to output this data here. So let's just quickly go over the data here. It's just the same as I've, as I've shown you here in the, in the kind of playbook. We have one cycle yeah, with a length of 80. So the longer term cycle you've seen, we have another cycle with a length of 45, uh, 40, yeah, 45 and an amplitude of 50. So two cycles. And we overlay these two cycles with trend information and with noise information, which finally gives us this kind of data set here. So it's same playbook here, just not the web version. I will just use the actual version because this can output me the, the raw data for each data point. So what we will now use here, so we have this kind of every bar has an assigned time, but it's just for analysis purpose. It, it doesn't matter if it's a minute data, hourly data, daily data, weekly data. Um, it's just each bar needs to have a oops kind of um, uh, oops sorry time information. Um, and what I will now do, I will just copy and paste the time and value information, so the raw data, bring this into a new data set and save it as a ZSV file. So then we can import this into our cycle scanner. So I will just create a new sheet. Uh, just copy and paste the data into that and I will save this data set now as a ZSV file. Save as MPC, comma separated values, test cycles. Just save it away. Now we will go into our um, cycle scanner. So I've just saved the data set. So let's now get back to uh, the web window. I will now go into the cycle analyzer. This is uh, how it looks like when you open it with your membership account. And there you have my data sets. So I will just clean it up a little bit. Um, I will upload a new one. I will now select the save data set, um, which should be test cycles. This is the one I've just saved. I will upload it here. Daily data, test cycles, to um, name it however you like it. So now we can open this data set in the cycle scanner. So and what you now see is the exact same um, basic information here, which two cycles, random noise and trend information just uploaded now into a cycle scanner. And the cycle scanner now is doing exactly the opposite, what I've uh, shown you. So he tries to reverse engineer uh, what cycles are in this data set. And this is output on the right hand side. So you see the cycle analyzer detected two cycles, one with a length of 45 and another one with a length of 80. And do you remember how we built this data set? So we built this data set by just um, adding two cycles. And these cycles at a length of 80 and 44. So you see it here, here uh, in the session. So the first, the length of 80, and the second, the length of 40, 44, five. So um, let's get back to the cycle analyzer. And here you see that it's, it, the cycle analyzer clearly detected the cycles which have been acted in this data set. And that's the purpose of the cycle analyzer. Let's tweak out the cycles which are in this data set here. Um, you might wonder why there are a lot of other cycles uh, labeled here. I will go in, in a second um, session more in depth on that. What's important here is that you can see that the strength and amplitude information, once you pass the mark of 80, is a lot lower than the other ones. So if you see such a big difference in the amplitude and strength, you can ignore the other ones. Or even let's scroll down to the so-called spectrum chart. 
you see clearly two peaks which are now on the spectrum here. So the first peak is clearly seen at the cycle length of um, 4045, 40, uh, which is, which is uh, this peak here with the length of 45, and another peak of 80. So just by visually inspecting the cycle spectrogram, you clearly see that there are only two cycles in this data set. I mean, it could, I mean, it's for sure a theoretical data set, but you see how clearly these peaks with the green triangle show you that these are the valid cycles. All other peaks here in this data set have just very low amplitude. So you can just go with these two cycles here. So, and these two cycles could now be used to build a composite cycle. So if we activate these two cycles, which have been found in the data set, this gives you now the composite information for this data set. And keep in mind, the cycle analyzer has no clue that this data set was built on top of this cycle. Uh, what you see now here is, is important if you build this kind of composite. You see that this composite plot is now kind of detrended version. So the cycle analyzer pulls out all trend information, doesn't care about the trend. So, but however, even this were two trends in this data set along uptrend and a downtrend, the, the cycle analyzer was clearly able to detect these two cycles. Uh, what, you, what you then normally do, and that's the, and you see how, I mean, Perfectly, this this align, uh, aligns to the to the main tops and lows here from these two cycles here, and this is what you're looking for. You don't look for the noise, you don't look for the trend information. You want to look for the cycles, and these two cycles have been detected here. Uh, what you could do with the cycle analyzer, we, you could even go back to a point in the past, let's say somewhere here, update update the analysis. So you see now that the um, light blue data yeah, is not taken into account for the cycle analysis. So the in-sample date ends at this point in time here. So we can even um, disable that. So, and, and you can see even based on this data set, the cycle analyzer still detects these two cycles, which you will then activate um, to show you kind of composite. And then you use the composite to kind of try to do a forecast or a prediction here. So this shows you how these two cycles would continue if they stay active into the future. And I can now make the, the out of sample data set visible. So keep in mind that the light blue data here has not been used for analysis. So you see this would be the prediction uh, line and then align with the, with the lows and, and tops in the market. I mean, for sure, this is a theoretical data set, but this is how it works. So I mean, and you clearly see that this Cycles are now in alignment. I mean, you're even in a downtrend here, but, but this is nothing which you will see from the cycle analyzer. So the cycle analyzer still uses these cycles here. So here's the top, low, top. And this is the prediction area. So this is the prediction area when you see the, the, the blue line. Yeah, this is made the, the main, main uh, purpose of um, the uh, cycle analyzer so that you will be able to analyze the cycles built on top of the model and I hope it explained you a little bit the basics. In the next sessions I will then more in depth explain the cycle spectrum, the active cycles um, and even, even more on that. So see you in the next session and thanks for listening.